Welcome to Asian Pulse Television. We are broadcasting from the traditional unceded territories of Kwatlin, Silvertooth, and Squamish Nations. I'm your host, Shannon Pramal. June is Distracted Driving Awareness Month. RCMP's Municipal Police, in partnership with ICBC, will be out in full force with people who are drunk on the road and people who are distracted by talking or texting while driving. During this month, more people die on the highway and are on our street by either being drunk or distracted. Please keep everyone safe by not risking driving while intoxicated. I understand how important it is to have a place called home and it's frustrating using your hard earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages Canada Incorporated. I understand how important it is to have a place called home, and it's frustrating using your hard-earned money on rent. Vic Prasad can make you a homeowner. Get pre-approved services provided to first-time buyers and new immigrants. You can qualify for mortgage even if you have bad credit. Call Vic Prasad now on 604-306-6647. Vic Prasad is associated with Craft Mortgages. For astrology service, life, horoscope, and fortune telling, marriage problem, love problem, divorce problem, money problem, personal or business, all types of puja and havan. Call Pandit Lakshmi Nath Guruji, 1-604-849-4872, serving Alberta and BC. June is also Aboriginal Heritage Month. If you want to know more about Aboriginal culture, heritage, please go visit the nearest Friendship Centre in your neighbourhood. June 19th is also Father's Day. So from all of us here at Asian Pulse Television, we wish you a happy Father's Day to all the fathers and the father figures. According to Lisa Liponet, the chief coroner of BC, there are more women who died with illicit or tinted drugs in this month of April and in May. Tinted drugs are everywhere and they are killing our children. Today is also Elder Abuse Awareness Day. If you are an elder who is being abused by a family member, please report it to Elder Abuse Helpline at 1-800-563-0808. Now, we have Mina J from MindSense in our studio to talk about mental health. And mental health is an ongoing discussion we should all have with our peers, friends, and family members. They say mental health is a silent killer. So please have a look. In our studios, it's my pleasure to introduce to you one of the co-producers of MindSense. She's my guest today, and she's sitting right across me. And uh, she's here today to talk about mental health. Mental health, the more we talk about it, get the word out, and uh, we all, at some point in time, suffer from mental illness. They say one in five people will suffer with mental health in their lifetime. So this is something we do need to keep talking about it, educating our community, that is fine to talk about, mental illness or mental health. Mental health is as important as your other health in your body. So I think we all need to have a dialogue to talk about mental illness. So thank you so much, Mina G, be able to come in our studio. Thank you, Camilla. It's uh, nice to be on Asian Pulse. <laughs> I know. Yes. Um, yeah, like you were saying, so mental health is as important as our physical. So I think they both go hand in hand. Mental wellness as well as physical. Um, you know, your, your mind and your body is connected. It's all one. So um, w like you said, one in five people have some sort of mental um, issue or something with within their lifetime. Um, and one in three can, um, people will be coming to contact with somebody, either themselves or someone that they know that has suffered from mental illness. Um, so when we look at it, it's quite big. 
and these are recorded stats mm -hmm. you know um, so if we say these are accurate and we think these are high it's actually much much higher, much higher than because that because a lot of people don't get help um, you know they they don't seek the help so these are recorded stats people that are actually getting help mm -hmm. and I think maybe the children especially in last two years since we have been under pan pandemic the children did not have access to play with their friends and all that. And I find right now that there are more kids that get depressed, anxiety, cannot focus, are not interested to go out and play soccer or whatever. Whatever the lifestyle used to be, they mm -hmm. just withdraw from everything. So this pandemic has a huge impact on our youth as well. Yeah, I think the pandemic had an impact on everybody yeah. um, and especially, I guess, younger generation who, you know, the school, it was online, so you're not having the classroom interactions, the school life kind of environment that you were withdrawn from um, and not being able to see your friends. I mean, when we're younger, uh, kids, youth, uh, that is a large part of our life, right? School, our peers, our friends, going out with them, hanging out with them. So... Um, yeah, it, it affects everybody when, um, and you know, we all know that kids need routine. Mm -hmm. Children need a routine. When they don't have a routine, um, you know, kind of their own um, health, mental health suffers. Uh, so it, I think it affects everybody, but yes, kids too. And um, not to mention before the pandemic, there's a lot of things, social media, yeah. like the generation is social media, games, PS4, PS5, all of that been playing out. So we already had that mm -hmm. before the pandemic where kids were not getting out, youth were not kind of like, especially children, you know, going out to play. Whereas, you know, um, in the older generations, you went out because social media wasn't as big or playing online or phones were that big. But um, that probably increased and then, um, hearing a lot about it um, and also seeing, you know, you're on social media. What do you do at home? Um, when it's the pandemic, looking at your phone, looking at social media, looking at everything, and that's kind of taking up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So you are a mental health advocate as well as you are also a nurse mm -hmm. that you work. So in your life, <laughs> and we have been under pandemic for so long, uh, and there are, you know, we always talk about how the health care, uh, there are not enough people in the ERs oh, yeah. and all that. And uh, there is a huge number of people that work through the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the pandemic is a little bit lifted, what has people done? The doctors, the nurses, the care aid and everything. They have worked so hard and they give up. So there are so many people that they say they go to the hospital and it's not that the health system is falling apart right now. Yeah, I think, um, you know, as doctors, nurses or healthcare staff, there's a shortage, um, especially during pandemic. I mean, they were working. Uh, there's also, you know, being overworked, being burnt out and um, underpaid. Yeah, underpaid. Um, so I think it's a lot of. You know, and it, and it is an, it's a stressful job. You go, you know, you look, come across so many things. You have to deal with a lot of things. And then there's the so shortage of staff doing overtime. Um, you know, pandemic, you kind of weren't allowed to work at different sites. Uh, wanted to work in one site. But obviously then there's overtime when you don't have other staff, like casual staff coming in. Um, so I think it's just a combination of things. And nurses, doctors, the staff, even like, you know, in the hospitals, janitorial staff, there's the housekeeping staff, di dietary staff, there's so many staff. Um, you know, the staff is trying to do the best that they can. Yes. Um, but there's not enough resources, not enough, um, you know, resources of money put into health care mm -hmm. system. I know, <laughs> there is a lot, but it's still not enough, you know, I know what I mean? Like when we look at wait times in ERs, there's so much. Um, you know, they have medical clinics that are set up now and primary care clinics, but still, ER times are so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I don't know what is the solution for that. I really don't because uh, we all use the health care. Mm -hmm. And as you age, you always need the health care for your children, family, and all that. I, didn't, I did not personally felt that ever I will be living in here, that you go to a clinic and the, the office will be, say, open. But when you go in, they say, we are not making no appointments until two weeks. Why are you even open then? Right, yeah. they said they don't have the doctors, but then again, we need when and on the other hand, when the provincial government people asked them, they said we have created more space for the nursing in the at UBC, whatever. How long will that take for the nurses to graduate from there to be well, in, in the hospitals? The care is needed right now, and there is a lot of stuff. Like if you look at it, um, you know. There's nursing programs everywhere, mm -hmm. and there's waiting lists to get in the program, right? So pe people are going in, people are waiting to get in and completing and going into nursing. Um, and, you know, for medical clinics, like you said, it says open, but then they, they're they not taking any appointments. And if it's a walk-in clinic, they have a quota a day. So once they fulfill that quota, even though the hours might say they're open till 6 or 8, if they've filled that quota of patients that the doctor has seen, then they will not see anybody else for the rest of the day. I mean, these are some of the things that people maybe don't know. Um, and it is frustrating because you go, you check online which clinic, what time, and then you go there and you're not seen. So I think it's, it is a frustrating situation, um, you know, healthcare system. It's like... It's like housing. Yes. There's so many people that need housing because I work in the housing sector right now. You know, there's so many homeless, there's so many low income families, seniors, people with disabilities. So many people that need housing, but the supply, the actual resources to house the people is so less. There's waiting lists, and it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's frustrating. The health care and the housing are the two major things that I have seen. And I don't know what is the solution for that. Yeah. Because there are so many people moving to BC as well. Mm -hmm. There's 100,000 people moved here. When yeah. we have zero vacancy rates mm -hmm. and no affordable or social housing are being built, so where are they going to go? Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we are taking all the, the refugees as well. Mm -hmm. They have been coming in here. I'm not saying... That is a bad thing. Get them here because they need to go somewhere. So bring them here. But I think before we bring people in, we have to arrange for where they're going to be living. Yeah. Right? And the people that are already here from before. So we need to take care of them. So I really don't know what is a quick fix. Yeah, I don't think there is a quick fix <laughs> unless you can build so much housing and open, you know, so many new health care centers. I know there's a new one being built Um I'm not exactly sure, but uh, there is a new one coming up in Surya Langley area, or is it Cloverdale, I think. Um, but yes, we need, you know, um, people need care. I guess it's it's been from, I don't know how long, you know, um, you go to emergency, you have to wait so long. It's, uh, you know, medical system, there's a shortage of doctors, there's a shortage of nurses, healthcare staff, and it doesn't seem like the shortage is decreasing even yeah. though people are going into nursing school there's wait lists to get into nursing school but the shortage is still there <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like so i think oh, yeah. the population is growing there are lots more Definitely, people yes. moving in here mm. and like you say it's not just people from outside it's going to be people from Canada are moving to BC yeah. due to good weather or something. I don't know where they're coming. Now, they always came, but now it seems like more and more people are coming to BC. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is interior. There's a lot of places that people can go. But I think we all choose to live in Metro Vancouver. Yeah. And this is where we are getting very cluttered. There's no housing, no doctors, no nurses, no nothing. And the cost... Let's talk a little bit about this economy, cost living, the cost yes. of living. The gas price is two thirty-five, and this is regular. And those people that put the premium gas or plus premium plus, they are one two sixty-nine. Yeah, I don't. I really do not know how be people who have three kids, who drive their kids to school, who don't have no choice but to drive their kids and go to work and all that. Buses don't go everywhere. That they are unable or how would they be able to 
fill the gas in the car and buy the groceries and put it on the table for the kids. They said the yes. gallon or two gallon or four, two gallons or whatever. Milk is about seven dollars. Yeah, I mean they started <laughs> change, charging for the bottle. So like gas, groceries, cost of living, housing, renting, um, everything is going up. And I think, you know, we hear minimum wages coming up, but other wages also need to come up if everything else, like your cost of living is becoming so high. Um, yeah, like you said, you know, it's not, yeah, there's the public system, the public bus transit and SkyTrain, which works for some, but it do, it cannot work for everybody. I mean, if you're a mom, you have kids, you have to go to work, you cannot go on the bus. That, no. It, I mean, the time. And then dropping them off, picking them up, you going to work, coming back from work, taking them to activities, it just doesn't work. So if we can say, you know, we can do without cars, that's not going to no, happen. No, it isn't. It's not going to happen. Yeah. So a lot of, you know, a lot of stresses. I mean, we're coming out of pandemic, but we're also everything else, the cost of living is rising, the gas prices are rising, mm -hmm. you know, grocery, um, cost of groceries are rising. So as well as the interest rate now for yes, mortgages. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it, we're seeing other stresses now mm -hmm. other things you know that are very concerning i know yeah. and i think that's why when we started with mental health so when we look at all these price increases and all that obviously people are gonna yeah. be stressed out it yeah. doesn't matter i think the minimum wage has gone up from 15 20 to 15 65 an hour okay but the living wage look at the living wage in here who can survive with fifteen sixty five an hour? Yeah. You're right? Yes. It's very, very difficult. That's yeah. why people are doing two jobs, three jobs to be able to even pay the rent and be able to put the food on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what is the quick fix or what can anybody do, but I think this also puts so much stress on the parents or the provider, the people that provide for the children and they have elderly parents living at home as well. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, like there isn't a quick fix, but I think for our own, um, you know, mental health, obviously, the stress is increased. Um, so how can we kind of look at that and minimize or learn coping? Um, I mean, self-care is very important, but then, you know, people are like, well, we don't have time for self-care because we have to do this and that. We have to work and do two jobs, so it gets hard, but even... You know, self-care doesn't have to be hours. It can be a few minutes a day for yourself. And then taking a look, sitting down, making a plan, making a budget of, um, you know, what is needed and what is not really necessary. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, kind of trying to save mm -hmm. for emergency situations. Because it is very stressful when you don't know what's going to happen or, you know, um, you know, you watch the news or you hear about real estate, you hear about this, you hear about that, and you get worried, you know, this is this might happen, what will I do? So kind of preparing yourself in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also hear there are so many companies packing up in BC and going to Alberta mm -hmm. because at least they can save on the GST. I think they can save on PST, GST, they still have to pay. But the cost of housing when you compare versus here versus Alberta and other places, not Toronto, we're not going to go there, <laughs> but it's much cheaper, it's more affordable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But here is so, so expensive. Well, never mind affording to buy a house or saving money to buy a house, but the rent has gone up so yes. much as well. Even renting they say is for difficult. one bedroom, I was watching the news, in Vancouver is $2,900, one bedroom, condo mm -hmm. or whatever. In Surrey, one bedroom is $1,800. Yeah. How could people pay that kind? What kind of money you need to be making to be able to pay that kind of rent? So it's shared living. People, you know, even though it's one bedroom, it's they share the living space, minimize, you know, kind of share the cost, uh, and do what they need to. Um, you know, we still we still see people renting. We still see people doing everything. So know. you know, I guess f they find creative ways or finding creative ways of how to live where you want to live mm -hmm. um, and be able to afford the place. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I mean for single person uh, if you're going to university or maybe that may be durable yeah. 
Mm. But people that have ch kids and family, mm -hmm. you know, they need a little bit bigger place and twice they pay and I just don't know. Uh, my kids are grown up, so I don't know. But I can also see my children's kids. They are, you know, they are struggling well, so much. Depending on income too. If you're low yeah. income, there are subsidies. There are, you know, child tax benefit depend like uh, which is calculated from your income of how much you would get. Yeah. You know, um, so a lot of and then like the healthcare system, the Medicare, the pharma care, which kind of you get subsidized for, so that depends on your income if it's low income. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, there are some good points, right, where you can access subsidies and benefits if you are of low income. I think when you're kind of in between and you make the income, <laughs> but you're not like so high up, but yeah. you don't you get any you don't benefits qualify you for still anything. Have to, yeah, you still have to pay. You know the price, and there's no benefits. There's no subsidy that you can apply for because of your income. So it is. Um, it's difficult because yes, you work and you work hard, but if you keep. Um, increasing your income, you increase your tax that you have to pay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it's, I guess you just have to figure out what's going to work for you and your family. It is a very difficult time. When I look at it, the time that we came here, got settled, bought places, buy a car, whatever it was, yeah. so much easy those days to be doing that. But when I look at where we live today, uh, nothing has changed very much except the stress mm -hmm. of not being able to afford anything. The, you go to the grocery store, a little bag, what it yeah. be, about $20, $30. Now it's about $100 for one bag of groceries. And when you have to feed four or five people in the house, that's not going to last you for very, very long. Yeah. So And then rent, everything has gone up. The gas even, gas used to be manageable until very recently has gone up so much. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where we're putting $50 gas, it's about $90 gas in the same car. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like $10, $15. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's quite a bit. And that exactly. another $40 that you're pumping or putting the gas in the car, they mm -hmm. could buy groceries for the children or fruits and vegetables for them to go to take it to school and all that. Yeah. For working class poor, I really feel for them that I don't know how they manage. I mean, <laughs> for you and me, maybe we have worked and we know how to manage money and uh, we are not don't spend that kind of money too much. But uh, the people that have kids small. You also have children too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and buying shoes and clothes and all that. So it's very, mm. very difficult. I don't want to be a parent, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> right, but now. you are a parent. <laughs> but you get yeah. older. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it all comes, you know, like there's going to be different stresses. I mean, during the pandemic, it was a different type of stress and anxiety that people experienced. Now it's a different type of stress and anxiety, other issues that are coming up after the pandemic. Um, and I think throughout our lives, there's going to be things, um, you know, that as a society that we all feel and then we individually go through also based on our circumstances. So I think it's just, you know, mental health is very important. And I think we are creating more and more awareness around it. There's more and more resources out there. Um, so, and especially for South Asian community here in Surrey, also a lot of resources um, that, you know, understand where the South Asian community comes from, the family dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, reach out to one of those if, if you don't, if you feel like, you know, you're not doing so well or you need some help. I mean, there's no um, shame in no. reaching out or even asking for help. Um, and, you know, they could help you find resources or find, you know, what, what could you qualify for? Where could you get some help? Um, so talking to somebody, I think it's important instead of kind of worrying a lot about it, incre increasing your own anxiety, getting depressed and kind of isolating and going on a downward um, path, talking to somebody and... Because it's the solution, there's going to be a solution for everything, right? So it might not be what you thought or it might take longer to get somewhere where you want it to be, but there's a solution for everything. So talking about it, I think, is the first ap approach, yeah. yeah. And also, I think, checking in with people as yes. well. You know, sometimes we have good friends, we connect with them in good time and all that, and you haven't seen them, talk to them, pick up the phone, talk to them, yes. and just ask them because, you know, how... Thank you, Mina, for your work on MindSense and 
with regard to the mental health subject. Have your pen and paper ready as we have some events that you may be interested in participating in. Judge Production Jay Saini and Aurora Immigration presents Kapil Sharma Show on June 25th at p &E Coliseum in Vancouver. Co-presented by Verka International Food, tickets are available on ticketleader.com. For more information, you can also contact Sam Judge at 780-267-0046. Canada slash USA Khalsa X Students Reunion is taking place at Bollywood Banquet Hall in Surrey on October 1st at 5 p.m. For more information, please call 604-537-5123 or umagrant02 at yahoo.ca or Sunita Singh, Fiji2023 at gmail.com. The tickets for this event is $40 per person and all proceeds from the function will go to Khalsa College in Ba, Fiji Islands. Sanskriti Cultural Awareness Society of BC is in preparations for their first annual Festival of India, which will be an outdoor event held at Holland Park in Surrey. This will be a free event on July 30th at Holland Park, so spread the word around and come and attend the celebration. For more information, please give Sanjeev Sharma a call at 604-767-4366. If you have any events coming up in your community and would like us to promote it, please send it to us at g asianpulse at gmail.com. We ran out of time for today, but I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do bringing it to you. If you would like to support the show by being a sponsor, please contact Camilla Singh at 604-537-5123 or send us an email at asianpulse at gmail.com. Before I go, I'll leave you here with these thoughts. It's amazing how much people can get done if they do not worry about who gets the credit by Sandra Swami. If you missed our show today and would like to watch it again, you could watch it Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. on Channel 4 and Channel 10 in Calgary. Thanks for spending a part of your day with us. I'm your host, Shannon Permal, and stay safe and stay healthy. See you all next time.